Hello friends and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now it's been a little while since we've played Satisfactory and I want to get back into it. It's been since before the holidays when we were doing all of our uh, holiday fix it uh madness to build out all of the ornaments and stuff over here in this building. You can see all the way at the end here, which I haven't actually finished framing in. But today I want to continue to work on our unlocks for tiers five and six. Uh, so that we can start getting some new things online here and start working our way to the phase three construction. Now, to that end, uh, I was going to start building out uh, some new manufacturing facilities. What we really need here though is, and what I really want to unlock next is teleporters. Now that's from the teleporter mod and that just allows me to get around the map a whole lot quicker than walking or taking a train. Um, however, to unlock that, we're gonna need high speed connectors. And of course, to get to high speed connectors, we're gonna also need a variety of things. That also requires circuit boards, which right now we are also not making. And that's uh, just copper sheets and plastic. A couple of episodes ago, we set up our train station here and that started moving our plastic production from our oil plant uh, into our main base area. But we really need to start building out um, a area here for us to do all of this stuff of building out uh, circuit boards, high speed connectors, and eventually computers right here in the center. Now. We have a whole bunch of iron that's available to us on this side. Um, we have a little bit of copper on the other side of the map um, that way that we'll need to bring over. Um, or we can actually probably reroute uh, some of this copper that's currently being used for this copper wire. Uh, potentially that's another option. Um, and then we need to bring a bunch of these cables and other things that are going into uh, our main storage facility uh, into uh, this base here that we're gonna build. So let's get building. Okay, so first, all of our copper production that we had from our original base way back in episode one, up here on the hill, uh, that we recently repurposed for our uh, Fiskmas factory, um, I'm rerouting all of that here to make nothing but copper foil. So we're just using this for the, the copper sheets that we're gonna need for all of our various electronic components. So this has gone into the space where we had the uh, mini Fixmas factory originally set up. But we've left the main major one uh, intact behind it. So that's the first step. So then we take all of our copper sheeting that we're making and our plastic and we bring it onto the big platform that we had built a few episodes ago up here uh, above the desert. Two rows of five each, uh, which should give us 10 times 7.5, so 75 circuit boards per minute. Now to actually make the high speed connectors, we need manufacturers because uh, there's three different parts that goes into a high speed connector. Um, unfortunately for us, uh, these are really expensive and I have not automated the production of uh, all of the pieces that we need for this. The motors and the heavy frames, I still need to automate. I haven't done that yet, so I need to catch up on that, but we're gonna build two for right now because I still really want these high-speed connectors. Now, I did wanna show that, uh, once again, uh, why I love the Smart Mod. Um, Smart Mod, of course, helps you to automate your building, and uh, you can see here, it'll actually automatically set up the belts and everything for you for these high-speed connectors. You can see that they're going all right into the inputs. And with just one click, it'll automatically set all of this up for you for two of the manufacturers, which is super, super nice. So again, um, even if you don't like uh, playing modded games generally, uh, Smart Mod really, really makes this super efficient and effective. So uh, check it out, definitely check it out. Now, into these manufacturers, we need to put those three items I mentioned. We need quick wire, cables, and circuit boards. Now, our circuit boards, of course, are being produced on the floor below, so that's super easy. We just need to bring these up and instead of going into the industrial storage container. Our cables, actually, we have down on this belt here, so we can bring those up really easily. And then all we have to do is bring our quick wire over all the way from this facility over here where we're currently manufacturing it. Um, we don't actually have that tied into this uh, system yet, uh, but this is a good time to bring it into our main uh, belt here that we've got. And there we have it. I've only got two manufacturers set up, but these are putting out uh, 3.75 high-speed connectors per minute. And you know what? That's really all we need right now. I just wanted to start the automation. We do also have plenty of room for expansion here in the future. So I have these manufacturers shoved nicely up against the wall here, so the mergers just barely fit in this remaining channel between the wall and the manufacturer. And that gives me the full space I need in the middle here 
for the two different sets of belts coming down here to fill all four of these rows. And that means width wise, this is exactly the same width as the floor below that has the assemblers. So we're just going up a level and uh, filling these up from here. And here you can kind of see where I've got everything going in as a result of that. It's kind of, um, I'm not really using a main bus here as they call it, but I am running a large number of my items between my uh, remote factories back to my main base area and also this new uh, middle uh, factory I built for just the technology area. Um, so this is working out pretty nicely. So I just have all of these belts down here and I have splitters pulling off the items that I need as I'm routing them around the map. So that actually works pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and finish in all the rest of the walls on this and take a look. And there we have it. A nice little white box, another factory completed just for our high speed connectors and our circuit boards. So using that, we'll be able to do all of the other technology builds that we want, which will come over into this area here. All of our computers, our AI limiters, all of that will start building out in this space over here. Okay, so now we can get to the main purpose of this build today teleporters. So we have enough high speed connectors now that we can unlock teleporters from tier five. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We just need some regular frames and our high speed connectors that we just made in our new factory. And away they go. Okay, so like I said, Teleporters is a mod that's been added to Satisfactory. It's something that I've really hoped that will they'll eventually add to the base game because it just makes it so much easier to get around. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So they're relatively cheap to complete. Um, you only need regular frames. You need circuit boards, not high-speed connectors to actually make them. And then you just need concrete as well. And so they just uh, they look like this. Here's the wireframe. Let's go ahead and plunk one down. Okay, so here's what it looks like once you've completed it. Um, and you can go ahead and give it a name. I'm just going to call this uh, home base for now. That's fine. Um, and now I can teleport to any of these other locations. It also has two different modes. Uh, you can either make it so that you can teleport to anywhere by selecting from this list and then clicking teleport. Or if you flip this panel over, you can make it so that whenever you walk on it, you'll automatically zip to a new location. Um, whatever that location you've previously configured is. But for right now, we want to be able to go to any location. And so we're going to go ahead and use uh, the main mode. So let's go set up a few more of these real quick. And then we can uh, move around our base very rapidly. Okay, so I've set a bunch of teleporters up now. So I tend to like to put them at places I know that I'm going to be going relatively frequently, but not everywhere in my base. So every single production facility isn't going to get one. Um, I do always connect them to my main storage areas. So for instance, this is my original storage facility that we set up in what the third or fourth episode a long time ago. Um, the newer storage facility I also have here, which has all of our steel production items in it. Um, and then areas that right now I know that I'm going to have to be refactoring. So our circuit factory that we just built, for instance, I put one outside of here so that you can easily get in and we can continue adding additional floors here as we add computers, etc. Um, and also I know that the uh, old coal plant we're going to be redoing pretty soon because I want to take all of this coal and use it for steel production or other production in our big steel plant up there on the hill. Um, so this I know I'm going to be tearing out. So also your power plants, you're always going to want to have uh, an easy way to get to. So here's also my power station uh, where I have uh, set up previously. I showed you all this pattern that I like to use all of the breaker switches for everything in the base, which makes it really easy to turn things on and off if you go over the amount of power you need. Um, so another teleporter here. So yeah, power supplies basic production, things like that. And then I always put one at my satellite stations. So for instance, the um, oil production that right now we only can get to via chain or a very, very long hike. Uh, I went ahead and put one all the way out here as well, uh, just because I figured uh, we'll probably be doing more with our oil, our plastic, uh, and our rubber production in the uh, not too distant future. So uh, another station here. Uh, out on this coast all the way out here. Now, it doesn't show you on the map where all of these things are. It would be really nice uh, if it did. Um, I'm probably gonna go back and add beacons just so I know where they're at and I can easily find them. But for right now, these will work just fine. 
So one last thing I did want to show is that frequently throughout my world, I'll put these little way stations that I'll build uh, for these teleporters, um, because I feel like it's really helpful to be able to get around when you need to. I'll also use them just outside of new areas that I'm constructing. Um, factories in or mini factories in so they have an easy way to both uh, teleport to them and control power so some of those like remote sulfur nodes in the middle of the map things like that i'll use this a lot um, so generally speaking what i do is i just do a one foundation square block um, i put some windows around it and then i will drop uh, a door on the back side just to give it a little bit of protection um, Sometimes I'll put these up in the uh, air with a uh, series of stairs up and down just to uh, help with local wildlife uh, that sometimes come to get you. Um, and then all I like to do here is just do uh, a little tilted roof, just a little two meter one. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, the solar roofs uh, that come with refined power don't work so much with these uh, two meter slants. You have to use a four meter slant. That, that bug appears to still have not been fixed. But it doesn't really matter for our purposes anyway because it takes more than the uh, 20 megawatts that you're going to get off of one of these to be able to run a solar panel. Um, so for right now we're just doing it for a stylistic improvement rather than functional improvement. So here we have a little room just like this. Then all I'll do on top of that is plunk down my teleporter, uh, which again is under transport. Um, so I'll put that over here, generally right by the window, but still just inside the building. Uh, I'll usually try and run power to that, usually through a, a power outlet uh, running in and out, like so. And then the other thing I'll do here is I'll uh, put a power switch down uh, right here on the wall as well. And that allows me to uh, control uh, my power a little better. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll connect this one to that and this to our power system here and uh, this will just be controlling the local grid uh, for everything that I'm going to be doing. So for instance I'll um, connect this up, let's just say this is connected over here. Um, if I'm doing any mini factories over on uh, this side, this space, if I had a couple of uh, miners over here, I would build one of these buildings and then connect um, from this power switch all of my power out to those miners instead if I wasn't going to do a full factory build. And the reason for that is I want to be able to transport quickly to places where there might be backups or where the power consumption is too high or other things I might need to be doing. And I want to be able to shut those down very, very easily. Uh, so this is kind of the pattern that I use for that. I just make these little rooms and way stations. Now you can also like, you know, make these as decorative as you want. I usually find it's extremely practical uh, to put at least one or two personal storage boxes in here um, and keep some uh, food and some weapons and things like that there. Now, the other thing I like to do is put one of these portrait signs right on top. And that just helps me to find them a little bit better if I'm uh, a little further away from the base. Um, so I've been using these uh, this blue color for most of these uh, for my teleporter signs. I just think it looks kind of nice and makes it kind of easy to find. Um, and then I use this uh, exit logo, uh, which I think is a, a nice little touch. And then um, all I do is I just put, you know, teleporter or something like that. Um, and that works pretty well for me. Um, I usually like to turn up the uh, emission strength as well, um, just like that. And that makes it just really kind of easy to spot from a distance. Um, if you want, you can put one on the back as well um, and just pair it up and make it look the same. Uh, to do that, you'll need to put a power pole up first, but it's perfectly fine if you just want to put it on one side as well. You can, of course, get as fancy with it as you would like. You know, the addition of uh, some wall pipeline holes and uh, a couple of painted beams can really uh, spruce up a design and just make it look a little bit more uh, dimensional, a little less flat. Um, you know, it just makes it pop out a little bit more uh, in the landscape than, you know, just normal. So uh, I do recommend a little bit of decoration, but again, this is just a temporary structure or uh, something that's not going to be visited very often. So you don't have to get too fancy with it, but I like to give it a little something. So that is teleporters in a nutshell. Um, it's a really great way and satisfactory to get around your map without having to lay out ridiculously long lines of hypertubes or dealing with trains or any of that. You can just plunk them down, 
They're super cheap and they're a really easy way to move from one part of your base to another part of your base or to get all over the map. I'm going to be using these a lot moving forward. Um, you'll see me put them into pretty much every little mini base that I construct from here on out. Um, and we'll try to make them look a little bit nicer than just being uh, plunked down over at the uh, edge of a room or something. We'll, we'll try to make it a little bit more thoughtful as we've been doing with the uh, uh, various elevators and things like that as well. But for now, I think that's a pretty good stopping point. So thanks again for watching Enterprise Architecture, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye, friends.